Welcome to Focus on Creativity, where we talk about creativity. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Char Crail, and this is Focus on Creativity. And today I am talking to Adam Coleman, who is a, he has a production company, and he produces live events for like thousands of people, all in one room, thousands of people, which I think is pretty impressive. That's a big event. I've been to a few of those. <laughs> and he is also the owner of Proxy Audiovisual, which is uh, pretty darn cool. So I'm really happy to have you here today, Adam. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? I'm really great and delighted that you're here. Um, so this is a creativity conversation, right? We talk, that's what we talk about. And yep. you are like a master of that, I know. And so um, we'll get the conversation started. Aw. <laughs> we'll get the conversation started with uh, how, how do you interpret the word creativity? And also, how do you find access to it ongoingly in your life? Wow, that that's um, how long do we have? To, <laughs> All the time to, you need to to answer that question. So um, creativity um, to me is um, you know it's kind of amorphous. You know, it, it doesn't have a a very it has at least two different definitions. You know, it can be uh, a verb which describes what you're in the process of doing, mm -hmm. uh, but it could also be. Uh, the end result, something that you look or reflect upon as, you know, like, oh, I created that through the process of creativity. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I kind of look, look at it as um, one of the most effective things that we have in order to create what we want in life, you know, so, so that it's not so amorphous. Let's say um, you're producing an event and a client comes to you and they say, you know, they want something that's never been done before. And, and, you know, in your mind, you're like, well, everything's been done before or it's going to cost too much to do something that hasn't been done before, which is one of the reasons why it hasn't been done. <laughs> you know, but through the process of creativity, you realize that it doesn't, it's not so much that you have to do something that hasn't been done before, but you have to create an experience for people that they've never felt. Right. And how and how you do it, how you do it, that is the structure that you can start to become creative. So then how do you become creative? Well, you definitely don't want to decide that, you know, you want to practice creativity when you don't have to be creative. Be creative. So when it's time to be creative, you're not thinking about being creative. You're not trying to, you know, it's like you would never prepare for a marathon the day of the marathon, right? Right. So you, you prepare for creativity a little throughout the day in these little bitty ways. So, you know, what am I talking about? Huh. Uh, you, you know, my, you and I have discussed this before. Uh, sometimes it's um, writing a page a day. Uh, sometimes it's, if you're a photographer, like uh, you are, yeah. maybe it's a picture a day, you know, maybe it's a So that's theme. sort of to keep it alive. Well, that's what I, what I hear is that that's a way to keep creativity alive until you need to just like dive in to create something specific. It's like a spark, right? Yeah. So, you know, creativity is like a spark. It starts off as this very delicate thing, you know, it's almost like flint in a spark. And yeah. you have to be very mindful to, to keep breathing life into doing things that'll keep that flame going. So in the times where you have a big project, you know, you've already got the flame going, at which point you're just trying to get a little bit of it, you know. Um, so I'm trying not to be so, so <laughs> big platitude this year. But what I'm saying is it's important that people practice creativity a little bit every day. Well, every, yeah. All artists. Having a pilot light at your furnace, right? So it's always a flame, but you can make it go whoosh when you need to. Yeah, and so so how do you do that? You 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 stare at what you want to create, right? That's one of the fifty-two laws of success, uh, by, by I forget the author, but you look at uh, Hemingway. What did he do? He wrote every single day. You look at Bob Marley. What did he do? He wrote a song a day, right? You look at Picasso. What did he do? Every single day, something, even if it was challenging himself to you know do a single line drawing. What do you do? <laughs> I write, I, I, I write, it's funny, you know what I do, so I, here, here is, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but, oh, um, oh my god, your handwriting so, is so amazing, look at that, so, oh, so, perfect, 
that 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 is um a page a day and thanks to uh and char knows the backstory that i won't bore your listeners with that but uh a, a page a day uh i also engage in tape art and you've seen some of it i don't do that every single day but but what i what i found is that so when you get the the um when you land the client when you when you get the photo shoot when you know when when the company calls char to take a photo and they want something really creative well char has already spent so much of her time being creative in all these little bitty instances and then all you're doing is you're drawing on that muscle as well as just your, you know, your time in, in studying the craft. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that sounds a little bit too woo-woo or out there. Or, no, or, actually, uh, no. I think it's really, I think it's really clear, actually. You know, like, okay. the, you know, keep, it's like keeping the flame alive so that right, it's the same thing. You know, I keep thinking all these fire situations, but that's what it feels like to me. Um, like a stove, right? I want to make my coffee in the morning. I got a pilot light going on the stove. You know, I have a gas yeah. stove, so I just turn it on and the flame goes whoosh, and then I can have coffee, right? So I'm creating coffee. I'm making myself that cup of coffee. But I'm really interested in um, things that you do, like your own personal creative process, like an experience that you've had around creating something. And it could be anything. It could be dinner yeah. with your family, I, whatever it is. I mean, but I know you're up to you know some big things in life. So how do you access your creativity to to, um, to problem solve maybe or to create something like you said on stage that hasn't been done before you, you know what's interesting is is um to go on the flip side of the water analogy <clears throat> they say dig your well before it's dry so i just uh, came off of a big show about two thousand people and <clears throat> by all measures uh, it was a success client was happy the attendees were happy and um and I, 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 I didn't do anything that was never done before. What I did was take a bunch of different things that I had seen and put them together in like an amalgamation. Um, and, you know, we, we brought out some new social media stuff. We brought out a life-size cardboard cutout of the, of the star. Um, you know, we did the step and repeat. We did some rock and roll lights. Now all that's been done before, but never for him in that space. You know, so when you add all these things together and the thing, you know, the interesting thing about it, Char, is, is um, when it was time to be creative, all that stuff just kind of landed. Huh. I didn't have to try to go and do a brainstorming session or a Venn diagram or, or really, you know, um, I didn't have to do a lot for those ideas to come. Why? Because I I have a swipe file. I don't know if if you oh, I know exactly what a swipe you know what a swipe file is. is. Basically, but it's it, taking somebody else's idea or whatever so they've done, and you literally you just copy it, save it, write it down. You know the gist of it, and then of course you make it your own. But it's it's a it's a source of inspiration. Exactly. So every time I would go a, do do a show, see a photo on the internet, hear about my friend doing something, reading an industry trade rag or something like that, these became bits of of, of tinder yeah right yeah. Th th that i could that i could use um and and like i said i didn't start i didn't want to run the marathon and say okay the day before i'm going to practice <laughs> i practiced being creative all day long through the swipe file through mm -hmm. writing one thing i also do uh char um is I write down in my journal on a daily basis what I want my production company to become, right? So um, <laughs> that was a double meaning, right? Right. <laughs> w right and then R right. Um, so um, and I don't have time to go into the backstory, but I <clears throat> worked for the federal government for 17 years, became unhappy with um, – with you know working for the federal aviation administration and i remember about two years ago i was looking through the blinds of of of, of, the, of the building where i worked at it's called the tracon yeah. and i remember thinking that oh this is this is what birds feel like right I'm, i felt like i was looking through not quite a cage because i was making you know oh. six figure salary so it wasn't a cage but i remember I used to be excited about showing up last two years. I wasn't. I remember distinctly looking through those blinds and thinking, oh, this is what a bird feels like. And then uh, I saw, I don't know when in the timeline I saw this, um, I don't know if it was a poem by Rumi or something like that. And, and it, the, the guy um, <clears throat> says something about, I don't know how come 
that bird keeps flying to that tree. It, you know, it could fly anywhere in the world. And then the bird was saying the same thing about the businessman. Oh. You know, he had a, he was almost like a Willie Loman esque style of oh, businessman. And it's funny. So now I feel like the doors are open. And anyway, um, you opened those doors. You opened the doors, didn't you? You chose that. I chose that. You know how? Very intentionally by writing down every single day what my intention was. Yeah. I cannot make the connection between why when you write something down ad nauseum over and over and over again and the realization of what you wrote down. I, I don't know what the gap is. I don't know what, you know what it takes to go from one to the next. All I know is that I wrote that down every single day. And I've showed you the notes yeah. every single day for, I think, a year and a half. So and, you, and, created, and, you created the intention yep. and then you manifested it. And yep. so what you're saying is you're not sure what the thing, the gap, what's in the gap there, except that action, obviously, and putting yeah. pieces in place. I mean, you did do something. You didn't just sit there and say, okay, uh, make it happen. And then yeah. it happens, you know, you did something. You know, I think the, the you know, when you work out, there are these tiny micro um, tears in your muscles and they heal. And maybe writing it down every single day is like a micro tear in your conscience mm -hmm. as you start to build what it is you want to become. So I, I will not entertain conversations with people that saying, well, that's not scientifically provable. I, I, I don't care whether it is, is or isn't but it is part of my daily creative practice. So after I left the federal government and started my own production company, I started writing down that I wanted my production company to be one of a creative solutions oriented style of production company. I did not want to do it the same way that everybody else did. Yeah. So to answer your question, those are just one other thing that I do on a daily basis is I, write down what it is I want to see in my life, my company, my situation. And, and, and sure enough, those little micro tears in the consciousness and when they rebuild, boom, there it is. It, That's you know. very cool. Was that, the, did, did I even answer the question at this point? I'm not even I, sure. I'm not sure, but I mean, it's very interesting. <laughs> it's, it, I'm sure there, there's always a, a process you that know, meandering you know, yeah, path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. meandering actually it's kind of the perfect word but it's really so interesting i okay. like meandering i'm all for meandering you know? <laughs> i've got words you know i got words i know it's, all good. it's you know we just we take a, an interesting path to get wherever we go i mean there's just what's linear you know i mean a, a, even yeah. a railroad track at some points takes a curve right yeah so there's there's nothing linear out there but a line Right. So. Remember uh, Sarah um, in the, the book, The Rise. Remember that book that yes. we read? Yes. And she talks about, you know, the, the, the non straight line. So, yeah. Oh, I'm just going to have to clear this up because people are like, remember that? Remember that? <laughs> well, here's the deal. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say what it is. We, we met by accident at a, uh, an event shut up, called Shut Up and Write. And literally, I think within a minute and a half, there was like creativity. Hey, let's start a book club. And yep. so we did. We started a book club. So um, Adam, Chris, my husband, and I uh, would meet every now and then. We have recently, and that's here and there. Um, we, would, we would choose a book, and we would read it. And they started out all about creativity. So that's, that's sort of where this conversation So Clearly, we both have a great interest in that. And I'm sure that this conversation, our conversation, had some sort of Maybe a little pilot light, you know, for me. No, no, it, 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 it was definitely that, though, Char. It was definitely that. Because remember, it wasn't until I met you and Chris that you guys introduced me to The Artist Way by right. Julia, Julia right. Cameron, which is a great book. I'm sure you'll recommend it oh, to yeah. all your, uh, your, your uh, listeners and viewers. Um, and in that book, she talks about uh, morning pages. The three and pages every day. Every day, right? There's that discipline. And, and if you look at any of your favorite artists, yours, mine, your audiences, and you start to look at some of the similarities, there's very few similarities between all really great artists with the exception of one almost universal thing, hmm. the daily practice of their art or yes. create, you know, yes. create creativity. Yes. Uh, so you, I can't overemphasize that enough. It's kind of like breathing in and out for life. You do it on a daily basis for creativity. Yeah. 
And I think to myself, I don't know that I, I guess I practice my art just by default now that I'm thinking of it, you know, but even when I'm not like consciously practicing, I, I'm doodling, you know? So in a yeah. sense, that's still my art. And I bet you that's the same for a lot of people. It might even be the same for you. Even when you're not consciously doing it, I bet you're practicing something because it's kind of who you are, right? So it's part and parcel of, of your beingness. Yeah. And it makes it a lot easier for those moments when you do have to spring into action and be creative. Like, like I said, everybody is, um, we, we, we say creative, like there's some capital C pronoun and it's not, it's, <laughs> it's like saying everybody breathe, breathes, everybody is creative. Everybody, well, everybody is, creates though. I mean, we really do. We breathe, we create. Actually, I like yeah. that. We breathe, we create. Anytime you do anything on a conscious basis, you, you know, a decision, right? Yeah. To take, take, to follow your dream or take the safe route. That is being creative. You're, you're taking creativity and you're using create, creativity. You know, um, unfortunately, most of us, most of us have a, you know, you're even, you're either living life by default or design, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us are unconscious and in, in living life by default. We fall into these default patterns of being, you know, we, we default to go to the highest paying job. Nobody ever mentions happiness. We default into, you know, um, mm -hmm paying bills and we default into the comfortable life. And most of us, uh, creativity is dormant. You know, um, but anybody that's ever chosen beautiful hair color, <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking right at, at, at Char's hair. Anybody that's ever chosen to, you know, to really go all out on a red velvet cake or even the guy who manicures his lawn on a daily basis, those are all art. You know, it used to be called if you were left brain, you were a craftsman. You know, if you were a, in a liberal arts, then you were an a artiste. Yeah. But but it, it's all creative, and we we you, sh you should never separate uh, and say, oh, that guy's an artist, that guy or that gal, she's really creative. It's just a matter of how much you know creativity that you choose to use in your own life. And here's one way that you can start being more creative: is to is to move the things that you really like from a subconscious default to a conscious awareness of it. So if if, if you like football. Don't just watch football, like go as deep into the study of football, stats, host, write a blog about it, you know, do it to the nth degree. You know, I, I really don't care what it is. And that's how you learn to be creative. You know, most people just kind of default, oh, I like movies or, oh, I like, um, like to go to the museums. Well, if you like to go to museums, f randomly fly to another state and make a make a, a, a two days of it and on your way read all about that one painting you know deep what dive. was i'm here deep dive i like it it's interesting actually you know what you really brought up something that i think needs to be said and i'm not sure that it's been that I've, it's even come up in any of these conversations that i've had so far but the notion of how when we hear the word create we think about an artist, we do, whether it's a musician or whether it's a person who's painting or whatever kind of craft, right? We, we think about people actually like doing something uh, in music or art, but like you were just suggesting a guy who's mowing his lawn is making an art out of it. And that's exactly why I wanted to have this conversation because I think people forget that creativity is in everything across the board, no matter what we're doing. And yet so many of us narrow it down to this tiny little field of painting or music or jewelry or whatever, whatever craft you're up to. I think it's about being intentional. Just like you said, I think earlier, you know, creativity, it's just about being consciously intentional about the things that bring you joy. Whatever and then, that is, right? Whatever that is. And yeah. then doing a deep dive for some people, it's um, volunteering. It's almost like, what is your creative love language? You know, for me, it's, it's acts of doing. I need to tear tape. I need to, you know, be making a gig poster or to be doing something more in the classic artist sense. But other people, their creative love language or their creative language may be uh, acts of service, you know, where, you know, where, where they go out and... And, and, and donate their time. May, I, I work with a lady and, and she loves uh, swimming. She used to be an Olympic, not Olympic swimmer, a college collegiate swimmer. She's the uh, swim coach at her kids. Uh, and so you know that that brings her joy. And it's 
she can creatively bring different things to the table, how she motivates people to increase their time, their time, how she motivates, you know, her swimmers, how to jump in the water. That's all creative, but you have to be intentional about the things that bring you joy as opposed to just letting it kind of default. Because think about it, if something brings you joy, why wouldn't you take out a shovel and start digging? So if, you, if I like football, why wouldn't I learn about the history of football, you know, write a blog about it, do a Facebook Live where I call uh, somebody that I was in a book club with and talk about, you know, tonight's matchup. You know, I don't understand why people aren't more intentional about the things that bring them joy, but that's, that's just me. I've been accused of being a weirdo. And going off on Buzz Aldrin-like tangents. So, be, you know, feel free to – you ever seen him speak? He, so here's a tangent. He, he, he showed up at one of the events that I was uh, a part of, and he has somebody that comes with him as a tangent wrangler. Oh Her whole God. job oh is to keep this guy on task. So he may have to be my uh, subject wrangler as, as I <laughs> meander all over this uh, this green grass. I think that's so funny and awesome. No, I Because it's it. in the morning and I've had uh, caffeine, so <laughs> the, the synapses are firing like, like crazy right now. So. Gosh, that's so awesome. Actually, you've got a great <laughs> quote in here. I'll probably use it for something. Oh, li living life by default or design? No, I love that. Um, oh, did yeah. I, I, I didn't write that down exactly. Now I'm going to do it. Living life by... You're, you're either living life by default or design. That, that's not... Um, I forget who the proper attribution goes to, but it's not... I didn't come up with that one. No, that's, you said, what is your creative love language? I just like the question. I think that's a brilliant question. Yeah, and it just popped up out of my head. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why I wrote it down, because I thought, hey, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. That's your creative we, we, love language. We can totally riff, you know, on that one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Gosh, I'm not even sure where to go from here, but I think it's going to be fascinating. <laughs> um, hmm. Now, you know what? I, I'm going to bring up something else. I, I noticed that there was a picture of you on a stage recently, and I think of you as behind the, the stage, or <laughs> I should I say in front of it, like, you know, with your audiovisual team. With the bullhorn? And the one yeah. with the bullhorn? Uh, yeah. And so there, <laughs> was it with the bullhorn? I can't remember. It, all I know is you were on the stage, and it was obvious. And yeah, so, yeah, so tell yeah, me yeah, about yeah. that. What was that like? That was... <laughs> I, I, people. I <laughs> well, what you didn't see behind the camera person, there was only two people laughing at me. So I was on stage with a, <laughs> with a bullhorn. Um, and this, this, this has some long tail towards creativity. So ride on the back of the motorcycle with me and try not to fall off as I okay. reach the point here. Okay? okay. So the hotel lost power. They lost power to, um, to, to the whole floor. And it, you got 2,000 people in there. Luckily, it was daylight because, you know, the doors were open. And, you know. So my, you know, my client was like, hey, man, I need a way to address the audience when, um, when the sound, when, you know, when, when, when the power goes out. So, you know, we need to battery, you know, have a battery backup audio system. And then, of course, I'm thinking there's no way. They'll speak, you know, the whole sound system for 2,000 people is pulling like 60, 70 amps, oh you know. So there's – so – so as, as a creative joke and an homage, I went out and bought him a bullhorn <laughs> to show him that no matter how far-fetched it is, you know, almost on um, some Ritz Carlton-like customer service, white gloves, uh, you know, proxies on the job, man, you know. <laughs> so, so I bought him a bullhorn. So as a joke, I was on stage testing it. I actually tested it to the back of the thing. Oh, that's an awesome story. But I really thought, man, I was so fooled. <laughs> so fooled. No, I, to be honest, um, Char, what I, what I like to do is create the environment for people that have classic, you know, creative love languages that want to speak to thousands of people. I like, because there is a lot of creativity that, that has to go on in the you know, in the background, yeah. one to get 2000 people from 13 or 14 countries oh to my God. fly out of their comfort zone and to produce an experience such that they leave, you know, and sometimes do the guided meditation in tears and really transforms. So I'm okay with being creative in, 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 in that manner. And um, I'm okay, you know, I'm, I'm okay behind the scenes. I love it.
You know, you, you, I love backstage. That's where my art comes from. That's where the gaffers tape. The, it all comes from backstage. Um, <laughs> you know, being being creative backstage. So. Oh, Adam, that is so cool. Thank you so much. I'm really excited that that we got to have this conversation. You're so interesting. I find you interesting about creative. That's. I mean, this is how we met. You know, through this conversation, yeah. creativity. Yeah, it's a little little weird, woo woo, occasionally, but heck, I love it. It's it's kind of awesome. So you know what's interesting is that so through the, the the conversations that you and I, Chris, you and I and Chris had at those book club meetings, what I realize is that there are things floating around in your subconscious information, right? That you don't become aware of until you're able to bounce these things oh. off of somebody and you do a classic riff. It's like a jam session, right? Huh. So, you know, Peter Green may be doing a jam session and the, the music is latent within his consciousness, but it's not out because he wasn't riffing. So one of the things that I've learned that, you know, Unfortunately, you, I, and, you, I, and Chris can't meet as much as we have in the past. But writing is a surrogate for that, meaning that in 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 you know when you start doing your swipe files, doing your uh, study of creativity, studying artists, um, the best thing that you could do is to form a group of people and discuss that topic and then watch the ideas kind of reverberate and, and, um, and coalesce into something tangible. Yeah. But you, but you don't always have that option to do that. So writing is the next best thing. You would be surprised how um, things pop up that you weren't even aware of until you started uh, writing. And sorry, I've got a, get bring my dog in the house <laughs> it's all right we get a tour, we get but, a but you, tour now. <laughs> so, so that is the second thing and i would say for your audience as far as creativity is the importance of forming a group of like-minded individuals I like right it. and of course that you know nobody needs scientific proof of that you know if you have a political ideology what do you do you form a political action committee you know, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist monk, would call it a sangha, a community of people who are like my people. So, um, and I can tell you it's important because guess what? Before uh, Char, Chris, and I started doing our creativity meetup, I was not doing the writing, the daily writing. Hmm. They're, they are not done in the morning. I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you that. I don't, even call, you do yeah, yeah. Do, right? I, I don't even call them morning pages at this point. At this point, it's more like a journal. Yeah. But uh, still, you know, I think um, October 28th, October 29th, 2015 was the first mm -hmm. day, I think, total I've missed. Probably maybe 12 days total. Wow. And, um, you know, so I can tell you, I now know what it's like to, to write over 400 some odd pages. And, and it's not as complicated as anybody thought, right? Just, just what's just, going on in your brain. Yes, literally sometimes I'm just trying to get to the bottom of the page, yeah, you know, so because yeah. it, it's yeah. late, but... Uh, well, but, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compare that in a way you taught. It's such an interesting idea. I'm still sort of, you know, moving around in my brain. The idea that, which also I read something about in uh, Big Magic, that ideas are there. They're already there. They're already there in our stream of consciousness, but sometimes they'll land and you've got to use them or you're going to lose them. Right. Yeah. So in a sense that that sort of came to me is what you're talking about. And also sometimes we don't know, even notice them until they bounce off of something which gets down to your, you know, find your like minded group of people so that you can bounce your ideas off because then they become more, you become more conscious of them. But also in the writing, what I hear is stream of consciousness. Right? Yeah. stream of consciousness that you may not be aware that it's there but because you simply by the act of allowing it to come out onto a paper all of a sudden it is there and it is there for you to see and actually read and then become more conscious of it and then if you decide you like it you just keep writing the same thing over and over <laughs> and over again like an oscillator you look at um right now let's take the old radio analogy hopefully we have people that are at least 30 years or older so right now there's any manner of communications going on in your room right now, right? There's uh, 102.5 FM. There are wireless frequencies going on. There yeah. are satellites. But if you have the right device, the right antenna, the right resonant cavity, you can trap 
those, you know, those radio frequencies yeah. and it amplify them so that they come out of the ether and make it into a reality. It's the same with thoughts. You know, if, if, if you study or read or allow into your consciousness um, in an intentional manner, art, the appreciation of art, the appreciation of poetry, the appreciation of anything creative, then you naturally start to become a creative person just because every single day you're either, you know, and I can't emphasize that you have to do. You You're can't just the fire. You've got yeah, to yeah. the fire. Yeah, you can't just read about creativity or read about art or read about photography. Can you imagine trying to become the best photographer by reading about Gordon Parks and, and Ansel Adams? Yeah. Or or, or Crudson or any other uh, a photographer. So so you, you know, I want to make sure that people don't get wrapped up into the study of it's the study of and then the doing and then both of those things yeah you got to take action you got to do something you can't just so, think about it you got to do it you have to have an experience yeah so the doing becomes an oscillator yeah. your intentions become the amplifier and that's how you you know bring it in from the ethereal into into reality if, you know as an analogy i guess but but you know if you <laughs> if, if you understand how radio frequency works, then you, you get it, right? So all the radio communications are the possibilities, the possibilities of all these conversations going on from the FM, AM, satellite communications, your wireless, all these, but you have to have the right antenna. Your antenna would be your intention. Yeah. So if you have the right intention about becoming the best baker or the best swimmer or the best photographer, you know, so you, you all right, this is what my intention is. Yeah. And you just put yourself in those environments or situations where you're studying photography, creating a community of local photographers, going out into the woods, shooting black and night, I'm sorry, black and white, using the golden hour, you know, studying the rule of thirds, but then experimenting with the rule of thirds, you know, yeah. that becomes the activity. And then you start doing it just like an oscillator. Yeah. And then the oscillator becomes like a flywheel. And then it takes a lot of energy to get that creative muscle going, a lot of work, a lot of months, a lot of years, a lot of activity. But once it starts going, it only takes a little bit of creative effort to keep that guy in rotation. So when you need to be creative, it, it's almost like a gift and it comes a little, a little bit more naturally if you've practiced uh, leading up to it. Yes. And you know what? That is a perfect place to sort of linger. So thank you. I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna leave with that because honestly, that is. I mean, thank you. Just you just said it right there. You know, you gotta work hard. You gotta get it going. Once you get it going, you just keep it going with that tiny little flick of effort, right? You just keep it going until you need to activate it in whatever it is you're trying to be up to, so that it goes whoosh, right. That's what I just heard. So thank you, thank you, Adam, for this conversation. It was. Pretty awesome. All right, thank you for having uh, me. All right.